as we continue to think a little bit about a theology of uh, the people of God or the community of faith, uh, it's important for us to think about the purposes of the church. And uh, I want to, in this brief mini-lecture, discuss five uh, purposes. But before getting into that, I did want to briefly mention that uh, some of the Reformation theologians uh, pointed out that there were some key characteristics of the church, um, some things that churches should do in order to really identify themselves as a church. And so uh, the church would, would gather for worship. We'll talk about this. But uh, especially John Calvin would say that there must be a proclamation of the Word of God, and the Spirit of God works through the proclamation of His Word. And then also uh, that proclamation should happen in the celebrating of uh, certain ordinances, what we might know as the um, communion or breaking the bread and, and drinking from the cup in remembrance of what Christ has done for us. And so those things become really important elements of what it is to be the church, to, to then even follow Jesus' command uh, in Matthew 25 to, to teach, but also to baptize. And so these things, proclaiming the word, baptizing, celebrating what Christ has done through communion become uh, important elements of what uh, things that mark the church. Uh, what I want to do now is push a little bit beyond that and highlight a little bit about some of the key purposes of the church. And uh, the first purpose of the church uh, we can find in, in Colossians 3 is worship. And we know that people are designed to glorify God. And so in worship, we have the privilege of behold, beholding his beauty, experiencing the joy uh, of his presence. And so worship, if we were to define it, is really um, ascribing worth to God. It's saying who God is and agreeing with scripture in what it says about who God is. And Robert Weber uh, has said that New Testament worship celebrates God's saving deed in Jesus Christ. And so for us as Christians, worship really centers around Christ and uh, the work that, that he has done. And John Piper in his book, Let the Nations Be Glad, reminds us that worship is also the goal of eternity where we see in Revelation there that there is this end-time vision of a multi-ethnic people of God worshiping him around his throne for all of eternity. And so he even says that this is um, a motivation for missions, and that he even says that missions exist because worship does not. And so one of the purposes of the church is to worship God. The, the second purpose, which we've alluded to earlier, is instruction. And so Paul instructs Timothy to, to guard the teachings that's been that have been passed along to him, and he should then commit those teachings to other godly men who will pass it on to others. And this is this has been done throughout the history of the church, and the gospel is passed along in this way. We also know uh, from our previous study of 2 Timothy that, that the Word, that the Bible is our authority, uh, and it tells us what to believe and how to live our lives. And so this becomes an important function of the church or purpose of the church to pass along the teaching of the Word of God. And uh, in 2 Timothy 2.15, we're reminded to be uh, people who are committed to the study of God's Word. And so uh, Paul challenges Timothy there to, to be a workman who's not ashamed and who's committed to studying the Word of Truth. So the second uh, purpose we can look at is instruction. A third purpose is fellowship. And, and fellowship is from the Greek word koinonia. It literally means to have in common. And one of the great purposes of the community of faith is to, to build one another up or to edify uh, one another in our faith for the purpose of unity, for holiness, for service. And so we see throughout Scripture that there are a number of these, what we call one another, challenges that are, that are set out there. And I'll just read a few of these here. But we're challenged in Scripture to be devoted to one another, to honor one another, be of the same mind, to accept one another, to admonish one another, to love one another, to encourage one another, uh, to pray for one another, serve one another, to bear one another's burdens, and to help the widows. And so we see that um, fellowship is a key element of the, the community of faith. 
we are to be there for one another. And uh, another purpose here is evangelism. And so the key idea here is actually proclaiming the good news or the gospel that we've explored earlier in this class. Um, scripture uh, indicates that all believers are responsible to witness to the truth of Christ and then to call other people to be his disciples. And so we see in Matthew 28, the great commission um, to, to go forth and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And uh, just a brief comment about this passage. Uh, you may know this. If you look into the Greek, you'll find that there's really only one main verb uh, in this commission. And that verb is to make disciples. That's the command. And then there are these three descriptive phrases or these three participial phrases. The first one is, as you're going, uh, then you make disciples. So as we go about our life, we're to do it. But actually, there it's a kind of unique verb here because it has a kind of imperative force to it. And it means, as you're going, go and make disciples. And then uh, making disciples also implies then teaching them what, uh, what Jesus has commanded and baptizing them. And so our one of our purposes here is to make disciples, to evangelize. And Dan Spader has put together this uh, very helpful diagram, I think, of how to basically uh, organize ministry. And he talks about important foundations for a ministry in terms of celeb celebratory worship, prayerful dependence on God, having intentional relationships, creating a loving atmosphere, centering your ministry on Christ, um, being committed to the Word of God. But then, uh, from those foundational values, or those things that um, inform how you gather as a community, he suggests that we need to be engaged in all of these things if we're to reach the nations. We should be will winning them, uh, the lost. We should be building them up in their faith. We should be equipping people to go out and minister to others. And ultimately, we should multiply our leadership, and then send them out to the nations. So when we think about uh, the purposes of the church and what it means to be a kind of disciple-making community, uh, it involves this whole process, winning, building, equipping, multiplying, sending, so that all peoples uh, will be able to know the good news of Christ and be able to grow as his disciples. And the final purpose that I wanted to mention here is the idea of service. And so, um, religion, uh, according to James uh, 122, that is pure and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world. So we see that that service is an important part uh, of the, the purpose of the church. And uh, we also can look to a passage that's often referred to as the Great Commandment, or the, the Great Command here, uh, which Jesus gives in Matthew 22, which is, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your, your mind. This is the great and foremost commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And on these two commandments depend the whole law and the prophets. So we're commanded to love God and to love others. And then ultimately, we also see in Micah 6, 8, this strong commitment to helping those who are not being treated rightly. So um, the prophet says, He has shown you, O man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you, to act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. So this is how the church is to function in the world, to care for the widows and the orphans, to act in justice and mercy, to show love uh, to God and to others. And I just wanted to briefly comment on the early church in Acts as it uh, kind of shows us a bit about the purposes of the church. The characteristics of the early church were that of progress. And we see the progress reports throughout the book of Acts so that we can see the church growing. We see the word of God spreading. We see that the church was strengthened, encouraged by the Holy Spirit. We see that, that people are changed. Where there was once fear, there is now faith. And we see a bold witness there, even to the point of being willing to, to be killed for their faith. And we also see um, certain characteristics of the community of faith as described in, in Acts 2 and, and Acts 4. 
They were committed to the apostles' teaching. They were committed to fellowship, to communion and prayer. They were in awe of the majesty and power of God. They shared, they cared for the poor in their midst. They maintained a worshipful attitude, and they uh, enjoyed favor with the people around them and experienced unity. Uh, in the midst of all of this, they testified uh, to the goodness of Christ. And so when we think about the purposes of the church and the marks of the church, these five key purposes and these characteristics that emerge in the book of Acts uh, should be those things which we look to in trying to define what does it mean to be the community.